Our next topic is CEC, and we're not talking about Chuck E. Cheese here. I know my kids were kind of excited there when I said CEC. We're, we're talking about cation exchange capacity. Yeah, we've been doing a series here for a few weeks talking about soil tests and what's really important. Certainly N, P, and K is on there, and you need to look at those things. But something we think is even more important than N, P, and K is cation exchange capacity, so what is it? Well, cation exchange capacity is basically a measurement of the holding capacity of your soil. So it talks about how many nutrients your soil can hold, how much water it can hold, how many ag chemicals it could tie up, potentially. Yeah, and if you don't know what your cation exchange capacity is, you don't know how much of anything you can really apply safely. Like, take for example, nitrogen. If you've got a cation exchange capacity of 20, we often figure that you can apply about 10 times that amount worth of nitrogen. So 10 times 20 is 200 pounds of nitrogen that your soil can hold at any one time. Now this is a rough measurement, but it's going to get you relatively close. So, you know, you say, well, that's no problem. 200 pounds of nitrogen, I can raise really good corn on that. Well, you can today, but when are we going to be shooting for 300 bushel corn? I mean, it's only going to be a few <laughs> years. Well, you might laugh, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that our dad probably laughed when we were talking about 200 bushel corn a few years ago, and you know what? Now we're getting 200 bushel corn. So the next goal is 300 bushel corn, and if you have 300 bushel corn goal, and you have 200 pounds that your soil can hold of nitrogen, that's not enough. So what are you gonna do? You gonna throw 300 pounds of nitrogen out there? Where's it gonna go? Well, you're gonna have to spoon feed it as you go when you get into these higher yield goals, or if you have lighter soils. If you have really light soils, very sandy soils, your CEC is probably somewhere zero to 10. If you've got medium textured soils, you've got some clay in there, you're gonna be somewhere in the 10 to 20 range probably. And once you get past 20, you get 20 and above, you start talking soils with a lot more clay or even some peat or muck soils. They're gonna be very high cation exchange capacities. Now here's what cation exchange capacity really is. It's a measurement of the type of clay you have in your soil, the amount of clay, and the amount of organic matter. So this is something, in our opinion, you don't have to test this every year. For that matter, once every five or 10 years is probably good enough because are you ever gonna change the type of clay you have? Are you ever gonna change how much clay is out there? I seriously doubt it. What is gonna change is the amount of organic matter and that takes a lot of time to actually affect. So I'm really not too worried about this level varying or not varying, but what I am concerned about is you've gotta at least find out where it is originally. You need to run cation exchange capacity, find out what your soil really is, and then you know what you can do with nitrogen and with a number of other things as well. You mentioned nitrogen holding capacity, but let's talk about something else. How about pesticide holding capacity? Now, a few years back when we were using pre-emerge pesticides like, say, Outlook or Harness or Dual or Surpass in corn, we would put a pre down and expect that to control our grasses for the whole year. Some of the chemical companies started going to cation exchange capacity measurements for their recommendations. So they would base the rate of an Outlook or a Harness on what your cation exchange capacity was. Yeah, so with this whole holding capacity of the soil or cation exchange capacity, when you put a pesticide out there, there are two things to look at. Number one is leaching. So if you've got something that will move way down in the soil profile easily, like atrazine and Sencor, for example, if you had a low CEC, if it was eight or six, something like that, you gotta be really careful applying those. And I might not even use atrazine or Sencor on very light soils like that. But let's say you've got a 50 for a cation exchange capacity number. What will happen is when you put a normal rate of a pre-emerge herbicide out, like Harness, Surpass, Outlook, Dual, any of them, Prowl, you name it. Some of that will probably get tied up in the soil and it will bind so tightly that it won't come available and come off of there to control the weeds. So you can use a normal rate on that very heavy soil and a normal rate on your other regular soils across the farm. And you'll find you have much poorer control in that very heavy soil. And you wonder, well, why is that? How can that possibly be? But it all comes down to tie up. You may talk to a neighbor who says, well, I'm using that same pre-emerge product you are, and it's working great for me. And you say, well, wait a minute, I'm not having very good luck. How come it isn't controlling my weeds? And the difference may be the soils that you're talking, and it can change right across the road. It could change within your field. You say, boy, this part of my field, I always have trouble controlling weeds, but the other side of my farm, I hardly ever see a weed. Yep, so it is important to know cation exchange capacity, not just for 
how many nutrients your soil can hold, but also how herbicides are going to perform, how much water you can hold in the soil, everything. It's really important to know this, so make sure you get cation exchange capacity tested on your farm this fall. Well, cation exchange capacity may tell you how some of the pre-emerge herbicides work, but they won't do a very good job on our Weed of the Week. We'll explain coming up next.